and welcome back to the Final Fantasy XIV Crafter's Guide. This is Chapter 4, and those of you that started in Chapter 1 and unlocked your crafting jobs and are getting to level 50 now on all of them, congrats, this is a big milestone for you. In this chapter, we're going to cover the biggest part of getting to 50, which is some of the new abilities. Uh, we're going to look at a new basic endgame combo, uh, one of my favorites. Uh, we're going to talk about desynthesis and demi-materia. And we're going to go into the master crafting books and some of the some of the tasks in that start out endgame in Mordona. Uh, the first thing I want to do is make a quick note about the Igzali Beast Tribe quests in North Shroud. These are crafting quests that back in 2.x were designed to help boost EXP for crafters and give them something to do on dailies. These days with collectible synthesis, they're not really all that worth the time. There are some minions and some side story involved with the Beast Tribe, so if you're a completionist and you want to get those minions or that special mount, then you definitely want to look into at least passively doing some of these quests uh, and gaining your reputation bar. Another thing I wanted to make a quick note of is the Free Company Workshop. The Workshop is a special room in your Free Company main house. And in this room is where all of the designing and the building of Free Company airships happen. Uh, usually more likely than not there's someone in the FC who is kind of holding the reins to a workshop and so if you get a chance and you and you feel inclined you want to approach that person and let them know that you're willing to contribute materials. Uh, by contributing materials on the workshop bench you gain EXP and the last note I wanted to make before we get here into chapter 4 is that at level 37 all of your jobs gained Steady Hand 2. Culinarian got Steady Hand 2 which is cross-classable across all your jobs and it is 100% worth it to do it. Steady Hand 2 makes your hasty touch much more effective and the cost and CP to put it up difference between Steady Hand 1 is definitely worth it so you want to start using that as soon as you get it. So let's dive in. Here in the first part of chapter 4 we're going to talk about uh, one of the two most valuable level 50 cross-class abilities that you're going to get and use endgame and that ability is Comfort Zone. Comfort Zone is from Alchemy and has a 66 CP cost and it's a CP regenerator. Um, you net a total of 14 CP after the 10 turns are over and if you've ever been in a situation many many times like I have where one or two CP was what you needed this is the ability that's going to get it for you at the end. So. Whenever you start your new combos, you want to start with Comfort Zone and move into Inner Quiet. Speaking of combos, we're going to go over one of my favorites here. I call it the Great Strides Power Combo. Great Strides is an ability that all of your jobs uh, got at level 21. Unfortunately, because of its relatively high CP cost to the average CP pool back in the 20s, it wasn't really very useful, and now it is. Once you get your CP past about 340 total CP, you can take a craft of 15 levels or more lower than your current level and use this ability to be able to power through 100% HQs without having to really mess around with CP juggling or durability juggling. And if your CP isn't quite 340 yet, there is crafting food out there that's designed to bump it up. Booyah Base is one of the favorites. Uh, there's a couple of others, so just go through the meals section on the, on the market board and you'll be able to see what's out there. Uh, you might be able to snag some deals or just gather the materials and make it yourself. That's the point of becoming a crafter. Uh, don't count on that free company furnishing for much longer. Once you get over level 50, it'll no longer give you a CP boost, unfortunately. And if you have to, you can meld some CP increasing materia to the gear that you have to get over that, that hurdle, that 340 CP. This combo really is worth being able to do, especially if you're if you're powering your grand company turn-ins and still doing lev quests, which you should be through level 60. Uh, this combo will help you really power through a lot of those turn-ins very, very quickly. So let's get into the Great Strides Power Combo here. You want to start the Great Strides Power Combo by popping Comfort Zone, start that CP ticking, and obviously always inner quiet. For this combo, you can go with Steady Hand 1. We're not going to be using Hasty Touch, so everything you're going to do Steady Hand 1 is enough for. So after Great Strides, if your turn goes good or excellent quality uh, by the color of the material, then you can go ahead and pop the ability that you learned at level 43, which is Advanced Touch. And that's going to really give you a big crit hit on quality. 
If it doesn't, then we're going to use another one of the cross-class abilities we learned. This one came from Goldsmith, and it's called Innovation. We use Innovation because not only does it give you an additional quality increase boost to your next touch, but it doesn't take away any durability, it costs very little CP for what it does, and it helps move the turn forward to try to get a good or an excellent quality turn. If it doesn't come, then go ahead and hit that advanced touch, and you'll see Great Strides will fall off, immediately put it back on, and try to juggle again. This time you're going to notice Steady Hand has one turn left on it. We definitely want to keep Steady Hand up for the next turn in case that quality goes up to the good or excellent turn. So pop that Steady Hand uh, preemptively to keep it up. If it goes good or excellent, hit that uh, advanced touch again. If it doesn't, use Innovation to juggle. Finally, you just redo that same rotation again. If uh, Steady Hand falls off or Innovation falls off, put it back up and keep trying to juggle those three turn chances to get that excellent or that good quality turn in order to put advanced touch in with great strides up and ideally with innovation up and you'll find that you'll blow through all of your CP in those three touches but anything that's 15 levels or more lower than your current level assuming that your gear is up to date is going to be at hundred percent the next thing we're going to get into here in chapter 4 is collectible synthesis Collectability is a special state that you can finish an item in. Collectible synthesis is very much like Grand Company dailies in the fact that you can view the list of the items that they're taking in trade on your timers menu. And basically what you want to do is you want to go through and you want to find that gold star. Those are the ones that are really going to power your job up to 60 and eventually get blue scripts. Now there is some content that came chronologically before Collectible Synthesis, but this content really isn't going to help you gain any EXP, so we're going to skip over it for now and go back to it when you can easily do it at level 60. Collectible Synthesis for EXP will eventually start netting you crafting currency called Blue Scripts. Blue Scripts are items that you can trade to special NPCs in Mordona and Idleshire that can get you crafting materials, crafting gear, and master crafting books that have the advanced end game recipes for level 60. Now collectible synthesis is really easy. There isn't any mechanics that have been attached to a collectible synthesis other than the fact that you have to be in the collectible synthesis stance. Once you're in the collectible stance you'll notice that your percentage to HQ blanks out. That bottom bar no longer becomes an HQ rating but a collectability rating and the numbers at the right side indicate its collectability. Now all of the NPCs that are related to collectability will show you the minimum collectability rating that they need an item to be to take it and tiers of higher collectability ratings that will net you more rewards. Now the last thing we're going to talk about here with collectability is the perfect combo for it. The collectability rating is usually going to be something within your level range so the power combo isn't going to come in handy very much. What you want to do is you want to do what's widely called the Byragot's Blessing Finisher. Byragot's Blessing is an ability that you gained cross-class that is one of the more important ones at level 50. Byragot's Blessing comes from Carpenter, and what it does is it takes all of your inner quiet stacks, converts them into a control bonus, and applies a touch to quality. It's key in this combo that you try to keep comfort zone up, it's a long combo and so you do have the ability to pop it twice and get a net total of 28 CP back for, the, for what you spent. It's also important that you start looking at how many steps of progress you're going to need to make to finish the item at the end. So what I like to do is I like to keep steady hand up in order to use an ability that we got at level 53 called precise touch. And I use precise touch while, with steady hand up and I use Careful Synthesis 2, a cross-class ability that came from Weaver at level 50. And what I'll do is, I will use Careful Synthesis 2 to increase the progress while I'm waiting for the turn to go good or excellent condition. If that happens, Precise Touch will proc, and for the cost of a basic touch, I'm going to get a quality increase, and that Precise Touch is going to stack two Inner Quiet stacks. So I'll be building those inner quiet stacks while I'm working on my progress right up until one more careful synthesis 2 which costs no CP gets me to the point that I'm almost finished. Then 
I can focus the rest of my CP on juggling durability, building those inner quiet stacks, and saving enough of a CP pool for a Byragot's Blessing finisher. Once the durability gets down to 10, you're going to be down to your last couple of turns of comfort zone. Pop Master Men 2 for 160 CP and get Steady Hand 2 back up just in case you get a, a turn on proc for precise touch. Get your comfort zone back up and start the hasty touch grind to build that inner quiet stack. If you do get a proc on precise touch, definitely take it for two stacks of inner quiet. Once you get up to about eight or nine turns and about three durability left and your steady hand two wears off, you have to save enough points to be able to proc the Byragot's finisher, which is steady hand one at least of a 22 cost of CP, and then Byragot's with great strides, which is another 56. So in total, you need 78 points to be able to proc all three of those moves. Keep that steady hand up, great strides to Byragot's, and finish it off. Now, before we get into the Master Books and 2.x content, we're going to talk really quickly about Demi Materia because it is going to be part of what you're going to be doing. Demi Materia comes from Desynthesis, and if you've been dabbling with Desynthesis since you unlocked it, uh, you kind of know a little bit about it. You're basically just going to take an item and break it down to its components. If the item was designed for a crafter or a gatherer, it has a chance of breaking down to a Fieldcraft Demi Materia. If it is based on fighting gear, then it has a chance to break down into Battlecraft Demi Materia. All desynthesis can break down into what's called a clear Demi Materia, and that's basically just a money, a money that you sell to NPCs. Otherwise, um, all desynthesis has a base chance of breaking down into its material components. If you've gotten desynthesis up, or you're interested in getting desynthesis up yourself before getting into Mastercraft Tomes, you basically go back through all of the crafts in your crafting book to try to match up your desynthesis percentage and literally just quick synthesize items and sit down and just quick synth and fill your inventory up, break it all down and repeat the process until you find you're not really gaining anymore with that item and you move through the crafting log that way until you get high enough where you can start desynthesizing items that'll give you demi materials that you can use for master craft books. Now the 2.x content really is pretty worthless as far as the gear goes. Most of the gear that you can craft for level 50 forward is going to be better than some of these tools. In the guide I'm not going to go over upgrading through Supra and Lucius. If you care to do that, basically just look through the menus and you'll see the items that they want for trade. Moving forward, the most valuable things that need to be done here is the Master Crafting 1 and 2 books for all of the jobs. Uh, most of the recipes that are in here as far as 1 star and 2 star really aren't in demand now because anything you can make at level 50 forward, uh, the normal gear is all better stats or better eye level. The reason why you want to get these books for the most part is um, you're going to find there's some material recipes in there and if you're going to be getting into making any kind of airships for your free company, it's pretty easy. Using the power combo, you can pretty much get through anything 1 star or 2 star from the 2x content. So anything in your level 50 regular crafting guide that has one or two stars you can use that that power combo uh, with great strides to make all of those items once your gear is up to level 58 with the blue script gear coming back to this is a cinch and that does it for chapter four make note that as you get through the level 50 and start heading towards level 60 your Job quests will happen more frequently every two levels instead of every five levels. You definitely want to do them. The EXP is nice and the reward is a tier four piece of crafting materia of your choice. In the next chapter, we're going to close the series and talk about Endgame the way it looks now in 3.05. Uh, the Heaven's Word content and the, the Red Scripts, we're going to talk about uh, Red Script gathering briefly and how it relates to Red Script craft crafting and how they're tied together. We're going to talk about some of the end game combos and we're going to talk about specialization and what that means. We're going to talk about the abilities that specialists get, uh, the rules to specialization and, and what some of the restrictions are. We hope that this crafting tutorial has been very helpful. Please look forward to more guides coming out for all aspects of Final Fantasy on this channel. Don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.